In this lesson, we're going to continue simplifying expressions using our reduction formulas and identities, but this time we're going to have a look at numerical angles. In our first example, you can see that our angles are now constant values and don't have variables anymore, and that is why the question is a bit different and it says calculate rather than just simplify, and they specify that you should do this without the use of a calculator. So I'm sure that by now you know that when you see without the use of a calculator, you need to keep in mind your known triangles, 30, 45, and 60 degrees. But to be able to use these three angle sizes, we need to start off changing all the angles in our expression to acute angles, and then use identities to simplify. So here we're going to start off with the same two questions that we asked ourselves in the previous lesson. So if we focus on the first trig function, cos of 290, the quadrant that I'm working in will then be the third quadrant. And then I need to ask myself, is this a positive or negative function in that quadrant? And we are working with cos, so it stays a positive function. But now we have a slight difference between our variables that we had in the previous lesson and our constant values as angles that we have today. We now need to figure out what the acute angle is that we need to subtract from 360 to get to our original given angle of 290. And that will be 70 degrees, so we'll change 290 to cos of 70. Our next function is simply a negative angle, and we now know that for cos we can ignore that minus and write cos of 10. And the next one is cos of 160, so now I need to go through my three steps again. Firstly, 160 is in the second quadrant, and this is where sin is positive. So, second question, I will have a negative cos in the second quadrant. And now my third question, determine the acute angle. So, 180 minus what will give me 160, and that means I will change it to 20 degrees. The sin 550, I need to realize, is bigger than 360. So here my first step will be to subtract 360 degrees, and then I will have sin of 190. So now I still have one angle that is not an acute angle, and that's the last one. So the rest will stay the same. And for sin of 190, I once again need to go through my three steps. 190 is in the third quadrant where only tan is positive, so this becomes negative sin. And now I need to determine the acute angle. So I'll ask myself 180 plus what will give me this 190, and that will be an acute angle of 10. Now I can simplify that second term. I have now changed all the angles to acute angles, so my next step will be to use an identity to simplify. For all the compound angle identities, I will have two different angles. At the moment, I have three. I have 70, 10, and 20. So I can see here that both my terms have an angle 10, a cos of 10, and a sin of 10. But now I have a cos of 70 and a cos of 20. These two also need to have the same angle size. You now need to realize that 70 and 20 form 90, and that means we can work with co-functions. So for my co-functions, I'm going to keep the first cos of 70 as it is. But now cos of 20, I'm going to change to an angle of 70. And when I use co-functions, I need to swap sin and cos around. So this will become sin of 70. Now I clearly have one of my compound angle identities. I have the first compound angle identity on the right, and I can simplify it by rewriting it as the left. So this will become cos of the first angle minus the second angle. And this will give me cos of 60, which is finally one of my known triangles. And cos of 60 is then a half. In example two, we have three trig functions and all their angles are obtuse angles. So I'm going to start off changing them to acute angles. So if I look at my numerator, I have sin of 154. 
that will be in my second quadrant where sin is positive so it stays positive sin and now I need to ask myself 180 minus what will give me 154 and that is 26 degrees. Next up in the denominator I have sin of 193 that will be in my third quadrant and here tan is positive so sin will become negative sin. I need to ask myself now 180 plus what gives me 193 and that is 13 degrees. And lastly, cos of 373, 373 is bigger than 360, so I'm going to start off subtracting 360, and then I will have cos of 13 degrees. Now all my angles are acute angles, so I can focus on my identities. In my expression, I have two angles, I have 13 and I have 26, so you need to realize that 13 doubled is 26 so I'm going to have a look at my double angle identities. I'm going to change my numerator and take that as the left hand side of my sin double angle identity to expand it to the right. So it is going to become 2 sin 13 times cos 13 and the denominator stays the same. Now I can simplify and I'll end with an answer of minus 2. In example 3, in my numerator I already have two acute angles, but tan is still a negative angle. And now I'm going to remind you that for tan and for sin, a negative angle needs to be put in front, so it is the same as negative tan of 12. In my denominator I have two acute angles and then one obtuse angle, but those two acute angles that I have, you need to realize once again add up to 90, which means I can use co-functions to change them into something I can use. So I'm going to keep the sin of 10 just like that. But now sin of 80 I'm going to change also to an angle of 10. And that means I'm going to have to change sin to cos because I'm using co-functions. If I then look at my last trig function, sin of 321, that is in the fourth quadrant, and that is where sin is negative. So I'm going to change that, writing the square on the outside, I'm going to change sin of 321 to negative sin, and now I need to ask myself 360 minus what gives me 321, and that is 39 degrees. Now all my angles are acute angles, so I can simplify and I can use identities. So I'm going to use an identity straight away and change tan to sin over cos, so it's going to become sin 12 over cos 12. And that I still need to multiply by cos 12 in my numerator. In my denominator I'm going to use another identity, and that's an old identity sin squared 10 plus cos squared 10 will be 1. And next up I'm just going to simplify all those signs. So firstly in my bracket I have minus sin 39 squared which will become positive and then I have to multiply that with negative 2 so it's negative 2 sin squared 39. Now I can simplify a bit further in my numerator the cos 12s will divide and become 1 and I'm left with minus sin 12. If you look closely at your denominator you will realize that that is the right hand side of one of our cos double angle identities so I'm going to change it to the left hand side which means I will change it to cos of double the angle which is 39 and that will be 78 degrees. If I now compare the 12 and the 78, you will realize that once again we have co-functions because 12 and 78 add up to be 90. So in my next step I'm going to change one of them so that they are the same. So I'm going to keep my sin 12 as it is, but cos I'm going to change that cos of 78 to 12 degrees as well. And if I use co-functions, cos needs to change to sin. 
And that means my final answer is minus 1.